Hello? Uh, hi. Can I speak to Mr. Mathis? Speaking. Yes, this is the principal calling from Mount Vernon Elementary School. Um, we have a situation here where your daughter has been hurt. What do you mean my daughter's been hurt? Wait, man, wait, wait, wait. What's wrong with Lee? Um, sir, we, we, we've got this situation under control. But please, if you and your wife could get down here as soon as possible. Lee is talking to counselors Listen, now. Listen, I'm a man of God. But nobody better put their hands on my daughter, Leah. Now you tell me, what happened to Leah? What happened, what to, happened, Leah? To, Leah? What happened to Leah? Three, two, Chicago. Some call it one of the coldest cities in America. And in 1967, the year of the catastrophic blizzard, Chicago turned to ice. It was definitely cold. One year later, emerging out of this cold, was Leah Mathis. And although baby Leah missed the horrific blizzard in 1967, she was not able to avoid the cold temperatures and the coldness of some human beings from her own hometown. It always puzzled me as to how so many African Americans, including Leah's family, moved to the coldest region of the country, especially the city of Chicago. And that's when I found out about the Great Migration. Between 1910 and 1970, approximately 6 million African Americans moved from southern states to northwestern cities like Detroit and Chicago. They moved for the possibilities of employment and to escape Jim Crow. And Leah's family was no different, migrating from places like Lithia Springs, Georgia and Dyersburg, Tennessee. The blizzard of 1967 seemed to bring more highs and lows than just icy conditions for the people of Chicago. In March of 1967, one of the greatest high school basketball players, Ben Wilson, was born in Chicago. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. About a year later, April 4, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. And three days after Dr. King's assassination, Leah Mathis was born. At a very early age, Leah was a smart kid in school. Her father and mother, Eddie and Irma Jean, fostered this type of learning. You know, being a pastor's kid with two parents seems like it would make school a breeze. But even with all that, there are social roadblocks that can hurt a child's psyche forever. And one of those painful roadblocks for Leo was something called colorism. Colorism is a concept that takes place in many cultures and countries around the globe. But amongst African Americans, it can be extremely hurtful, especially to children growing up. There continues to be a schism between light girls and dark girls. Dark dark girls, girls dark team light skin, <laughs> team dark skin. Black women have been cultured to compare and not connect. It hurts more when it's coming from your own. To this day, you have beautiful, dark-skinned African-American children questioning where they belong as far as beauty and intelligence. Team light skin, team dark skin. And for lighter-skinned African-Americans, many are questioned about being black enough. This mindset can lead to a super high level of bullying and resentment, especially in school systems. Team light skin, team dark skin. As a child, Leah was no stranger to being picked on because of her skin color. One day in elementary school, it all came to a boiling point. So Leah's sitting in class one day, and she smells hair burning. Suddenly she realizes that someone had actually lit her hair on fire. I can't imagine what type of imprint this moment had on Leah's mind, where dislike goes from name calling to physical torture.
According to most child psychologists, most children never recover from childhood trauma. But Leah's family continued to encourage her through pure faith and the belief in prayer. And then Leah received her first miracle. This tiny girl who was once ashamed of her own skin wasn't ashamed of music and the voice that the Creator had given her. Picture this. Leah's this little tiny girl and she's sounding like Mahalia Jackson. I mean, blowing sounds that you just can't even imagine. You don't even know where the sound is coming from. As Leah's voice and confidence started to grow, so did the city of Chicago's national black influence. Harold Washington has a different plan. But while they fight over that machine, I shall fight for Chicago by getting jobs and money. It's going to do, it'll do well. And if it doesn't? And if it doesn't, I will still do well. I will do well because I'm not defined by a show. You know, I think we are defined by the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat other people. I may be poor, but I am somebody. I may be on welfare, but I am somebody. Yes, there's corruption there. Yes, there's mismanagement of resources. Yes, there is abuse. There's abuse in every nation on earth, including this one. So let's not play holy. In Chicago, it happened again last night. Kids shooting kids. Gangs fighting gangs. This time, three boys were shot at a hot dog stand and a 15-year-old died. Almost 70 killings this year have been tied to gang violence in Chicago. Throughout Leah's teen years, she continued to sing in church and at various events in the Chicago area. But at her 21st birthday party, she met a man that would change her life forever. His name? Rudy Oduro Corton. At first, Leah could not believe Rudy wanted to marry her so fast. But within a few months, Leah knew inside of her soul that Rudy was the man for her. The couple started a family, eventually raising five kids together. Their love for God, each other, and family was unbreakable until life gives you a test just to see how strong your faith is. The most trying time in Leah's life was when Leah's mother became extremely sick. Sick to the point where Leah held her mother in her arms as she took her last breath. The loss of Leah's mom had a tremendous effect on Leah and her family. Leah was unsure if she was ever going to recover from this dark place. You know, Leah was a classic daddy's girl, but she needed her mom at this critical stage in her life, the same way she needed her mom as a little girl in school. Through prayer and support, Leah slowly turned the corner on despair, and with Rudy's encouragement, Leah began to sing again, creating a whole new image. Leah's work in the gospel industry garnered attention from gospel award shows to magazines and even popular gospel videos. The little girl who was once picked on went from Baby Leah to Lady Leah, working with the likes of And if you ask Leah, how did she survive the self-hate, she would simply say, through God, prayer, and family and to never believe what the world says about you. In the end, it's not just about what happened to Leah, it's also about what happened to the others in Leah's world.
talk to you, Lord, and I'll ask you for Filling your history in minutes. 